Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I have another base complexion, foundation, skin tint review. I've tested a few different foundations, skin tints on my channel in the past and you guys seem to really enjoy them. So I did pick up another skin tint for review today and this is the new Maybelline Super Stay 24 hour skin tint. So I believe this is fairly new to the market. I did pick this up from Beauty Bay and it's £12.99. So drugstore makeup is really creeping up in pricing, um, but it's still cheaper than the L'Oreal skin tint. So I do definitely have some thoughts on this skin tint. Um, I have done an application as well and I will be talking a little bit about how it wears throughout the day. This is not my first time applying it today. I've worn it a couple of times before just so I can really get an idea of how this product wears and also how it compares to other skin tints that I've used. So I do find comparisons to be quite helpful as well because we're not often buying, you know, 10 different skin tints at once, are we? So um, yes, I will have my rosing skin tint video and my L'Oreal skin tint video linked down below for you as well. So I really hope that you enjoy. If you do, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. And if you want to hear my thoughts on the Maybelline skin tint, then just keep watching. So this retails for $12.99. I did pick mine up from Beauty Bay, which I find is a really good destination actually. If you're looking for new drugstore products in the market, products that are trending, I do find that Beauty Bay has a really nice selection. They have 20 shades available and I picked up the shade 03, which I think is a really good match for me at the moment. So Maybelline did opt for this kind of dropper style packaging. Not my favourite, I find that it gets quite messy. I think I said the same with the L'Oreal skin tint as well. I do prefer a slightly different application method. A pump or a squeezy tube, I do think is a lot better, a lot easier to get the product out and to control how much product you're getting as well. So this does contain vitamin C to help brighten the skin and just keep a nice healthy radiance throughout the day. This is their Superstay line, so they do claim that it lasts all day, resists sweat, they do say that this is a skin tint foundation, which doesn't quite add up in my brain. <laughs> Either a skin tint or you're a foundation. For me, this does lean more into the foundation side of things rather than skin tint. I think that might just be something they've used to market the product because skin tints are very popular and trending at the moment, especially as we approach summer. Um, but I personally don't think it really has the qualities that you would associate with a skin tint. So I did want to compare the Maybelline skin tint to the L'Oreal skin tint. Obviously the packaging is quite similar. They both have 30 mils of product and they both have that kind of pipette dropper applicator style. When I tried the L'Oreal one, and I do have a full uh, review on this on my channel, so I will have that linked if you want a little bit more um, details and a little bit more information. I did also find that this one was more of a light to medium foundation rather than a traditional skin tint, which in my brain, skin tints are sheer, very light coverage, they just give the skin a nice veil, evening out the skin tone ever so slightly, but it's more so a skincare makeup hybrid product. Whereas I do feel like L'Oreal and the Maybelline both lean more towards a light to medium coverage foundation. So I do feel like if you are in boots, you might be toying between the two skin tints. Um, they are quite similar pricing, I think the L'Oreal is maybe a couple of pound more expensive might be around 14 to 15 pound. I do feel like L'Oreal is more lightweight on the skin, doesn't set down as much as this one does, and it does give me a tiny bit more radiance, a tiny bit more hydrating. Now, this one does have hyaluronic acid in, so that might be why I kind of prefer the L'Oreal a little bit more because it does just feel a tiny bit more hydrating on my skin. So those are kind of the main claims and a little bit of a side by side in comparison to the L'Oreal skin tint. In terms of higher end skin tints that I've used, such as the Glossier and the Rose Ink, this just does not feel like those at all. For me, the Rose Ink and the Glossier skin tints are more of that skincare makeup hybrid product. They're very, very lightweight, very sheer, very fluid on the skin, don't offer a lot of coverage. Whereas the Maybelline one, and the L'Oreal as well, to be honest, definitely give me more coverage than I was expecting. So if you are wandering around, Boots, super drug, and you're looking for a skin tint, not a foundation. Um, I would probably stay clear of this product in all honesty because I do think it has more foundation like quality. So I only have moisturizer and SPF on my skin. I don't tend to use primers when I'm doing these application videos because not everybody uses a primer, and I feel like it's a bit more beneficial just to show the product in action on top of a moisturizer and SPF because I do feel like primers can alter the look. Of your foundation. So yeah, I'm just going to be going in on top of my bare skin. 
So I have got my Real Techniques Complexion Sponge because this doesn't give me as much hydration as I am looking for. I do prefer to use it with a damp sponge. So I'm just gonna take the dropper and I'm gonna apply it. See, it doesn't even drop any product. <laughs> That's why I hate these dropper applicators because they don't work half the time. Okay, there we go. So I've taken a little bit on my sponge. I'm gonna scoot in so you can really see. Now my sponge has absorbed quite a lot of the product. But I'm not really mad about that because it does offer a little bit more coverage. It's a tiny bit thicker and it does set down as well. So I don't mind the sponge soaking up some of that excess product. Just so there's not too much on my skin. So that's it applied on half of my face. And you can see it's really taken down a lot of that natural shine and radiance I have from my moisturizer and SPF. It's made everything look a tiny bit more satin. And I mean, it's not full coverage, definitely not, but it's more coverage than I was expecting from a skin tint. It does look nice and fresh and radiant on the skin. I will say, um, I have worn this a couple of times already and I do find that it oxidizes and it really does set down. So <laughs> this kind of nice fresh finish I find only lasts for about 10, 15 minutes and then it sets down and you get something that's a tiny bit more matte. So I'm just going to go onto the other side now. It does blend in really nicely. Again, I do think a damp sponge just helps to really melt the product into the skin. So that's the skin tint applied. As I said, I really liked the way that it looked initially. Like this, it hasn't set down, it still leaves your skin with a nice natural glow, nothing too crazy. But I did find that when it set down on the skin, it did oxidize ever so slightly and it was borderline a bit too dry for me. Um, it was like on the cusp of being not very flattering on my skin. I do have more normal to dry skin, so I can get um, dry patches, especially around my nose and around my mouth as well, I find. So I think if I was to use this foundation in the middle of winter when my skin is at its driest, I don't think it would be super flattering. I do think it would cling to dry patches and just emphasize any texture. But if you have normal skin, more oily skin, then I do think this might be quite a nice formula for you because again, it does set down. It doesn't offer too much glow, too much radiance. I mean, you can see already it's starting to, <laughs> to set down a little bit. So I'm gonna do the rest of my makeup. So the other products that I'm using on my face, I will link down below, but I'm just gonna speed through this part and then we will come back and I will share my final thoughts. Definitely feels a bit more hydrating when I apply it with a sponge rather than a brush. And it's not um, clinging to my dry patches as much as it was the other day. And I did apply it with a brush the first time I used it. So I think that might be, so yeah, I think a sponge is definitely the way to go for me personally. I just think it performs more like a foundation than it does a skin tint. I do think that the name is slightly misleading. If you are buying this in store, often you can't get testers for a lot of drugstore makeup. so kind of going in a bit blind with this one. And I do think that the name Skin Tint might have you thinking it's gonna be really sheer, um, really radiant and just very natural and again, quite sheer on the skin. Whereas I find this to be even more foundation-like than some of my <laughs> actual foundations. Um, so that's just something to bear in mind. And I did feel like the L'Oreal one was a very similar story. Definitely not what I was expecting from a skin tint, but I do think that the shade match is really good. Comes in 20 shades, so 
again there's a lot more there than the l'oreal skin tint which i think only has about 10 i want to say this one definitely is a lot more long lasting than the l'oreal skin tint and other skin tints i've used but again if i'm picking out a skin tint longevity is not something that i'm really expecting i'm expecting it to wear and fade quite naturally throughout the day just because of how sheer and lightweight they usually are whereas again this one it does set down has more of a kind of natural satin finish on the skin i think if they were to market this as a medium coverage foundation i wouldn't have had an eyelid and i would have been like yeah i agree but because they've marketed this as a skin tint i do think that it's slightly misleading for me personally this just doesn't feel like a skin tint or at least like other skin tints that i've used which are just a lot more of a skincare makeup hybrid product i also think because it is thicker the pipette applicator style and again i said the same with the l'oreal one it just really doesn't lend itself to this type of product it's not really fluid and liquidy it's not like a serum so it can be quite difficult to actually get the product out which is definitely a con in my opinion and again i said the exact same thing about the l'oreal one so yes if maybelline did model this after the l'oreal skin tint they clearly didn't really listen to a lot of the customer feedback saying that the dropper applicator is this messy unnecessary and a lot of people have actually been going out and buying a pump for the l'oreal one so again in terms of wear time i did find that this wore really nicely throughout the day i do find that the damp sponge just gives it a tiny bit more life to the skin it definitely sits a lot nicer than when i applied it with brush i didn't really like the way it looked with the brush i just found that it looked a bit too dry it was clinging to texture and if i was having a particularly dry skin day definitely one i would stay clear of but actually with a sponge i do think it looks a lot healthier it looks a lot more radiant which is definitely the finish that i prefer from my foundations slash skin tints though we are going to be calling with the foundation so i really hope that you enjoyed that quick review on the new maybelline superstay skin tint if you did enjoy don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe if you're not already and i will see you in my next one bye